So this is Griffith's electrodynamics, problem 5.3. Um, looking uh, back in 1897, J.J. Um, Thompson, quote unquote, discovered the electron by measuring the charge to mass ratio of cathode rays, all right, which are actually streams of electrons um, with charge Q and mass M as follows. So here's the first setup that he First, he passed the beam through uniform crossed electric and magnetic fields, mutually perpendicular, both of them perpendicular to the beam. And then he adjusted uh, the electric field until he got zero deflection. So um, what we're going to do is find the speed of these electrons, these particles, in terms of E and B. So um, this is just similar to the problem 5.1. If we, what we would expect as, so if this uh, charge were um, positive, right, we would expect uh, as it enters this region of field, it's going to get deflected upward like this. All right, that's straight from problem 5.1. Um, so, but instead, what he does is he has an electric field pointing downward like this. So. Um, this is what they, these, um, if this particle were positive, right, protons or something, right, it would be deflected up, but he has an electric field pointing uh, this way to force it back down. And when these balance exactly, he'll get a straight line straight through across with no, def with no deflection. Okay, so for electrons, right, the, the beam is going to want to curve down this way, and electrons are, are going to move uh, opposite to this E field, right? So an E field in this direction will still um, force the elect if, if the electrons, if Q is negative, right? Um, we're going to be forcing them back up to this neutral position. So in order to solve for the original uh, speed of these, uh, we're just going to look at the Lorentz force equation. So we have a Q, and then we just have um, E plus B cross B. All right, if there's no deflection, so if these two forces are balanced completely, uh, such as in uh, part A of this problem, then uh, this is going to be equal to zero. So then what we can say is that um, E is equal to minus B cross B. All right, so all we did was set this inside these parentheses, this part to zero, because Q is not zero. Okay, so um, just real quick, let's look at the uh, vectors. Um, let's uh, go ahead and do this in um, Cartesian uh, coordinates real quick. Um, so maybe we, we just look straight at this uh, right as it's entering the field when it's still going in the x-direction and before it starts curving off in this uh, wacky path. Or I, I mean, I guess if the deflection is zero, it follows this all the way across. So let's go ahead and define our coordinate axes. Uh, I'll call this x, this y, and out of the page will be z. So e uh, vector is equal to, we'll just say e the magnitude, in the minus y hat direction. Uh, B going into the page is equal to B in the minus z direction. And let's see, oh yeah, um, V, right? V uh, is just going in the plus x direction. Like this. All right, so Look at this real quick. Um, so when we plug these in, well, let's okay. Let's just uh, work on this side real quick. So I'll just write this out: minus b cross uh, b. All right. So this is a minus. Uh, bring constants out front. B b, and then um, we had an x hat crossed with a minus z hat, like 
this. All right, so what is this? Um, so Z is going into the page, X is out here. Or, uh, uh, Z is coming out of the page, so minus C is going into the page, right? So we're crossing this direction with this direction, and when we use the right-hand rule on that, we end up pointing upward, which just means that this uh, little cross product in here is equal to y hat. All right, so um, when we have this, uh, now, now looking at this side, so we have um, e, and then we have a minus y hat, okay, so just this equation right here plugging into this side. All right, now we'll, we'll look at this, uh, this part over here. Uh, we had a V and a B, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring this minus sign in with the Y hat, because then these match up, and we just get this E equals V, B, or uh, we want to solve for the speed of the particles in this beam in terms of E and B, and that's what we're doing right now. So V is equal to E, divided by B. Okay, so there we go. That's the answer to part A. Alright, so for part B, um, he, he now turns off this electric field, so he turns this off. And he measures the radius of curvature R of the beam as deflected by the magnetic field alone. Alright, so uh, with this electric field off, since we have electrons coming in, now they will uh, follow this curved trajectory, right? And if the, the center of, uh, of curvature is out here somewhere, um, well, let's just put a straight through this origin, I don't know. Okay, so now we have uh, this radius of curvature that he's, that he's measuring, okay? Um, all right, so in terms of E, B, and R, what is the charge to mass ratio of the particles? So we're just going to use our uh, cyclotron um, equation, which we uh, solved for in the, the 5.1. So you just get it from um, the sum of forces equals mass times acceleration, and where the, the force is just the Lorentz force, and the acceleration is uh, B squared over R. All right. Um, so what we get is a, a Q V B. So this is coming from the Lorentz force equal to uh, V squared divided by R. All right. And this is uh, just um, just a centripetal acceleration in order to to get a. Um, in, as it follows a circular path, this is the acceleration that's required. Okay, so charge to mass ratio. Oh, I forgot an M here. That would, that would uh, confuse things a bit. Okay, um, because, all right, this is just acceleration. Mass times acceleration, right, is equal to the force. Okay, forgot the mass. Here's the mass. All right, so we just want to find the charge to mass ratio, which is just Q divided by M. So all we have to do is take V squared divided by R, and then we're going to divide both sides by V, B. Like this. All right, so one of these Vs goes away, and we're left with V over R times B. Okay. But um, we want to get this in terms of E, B, and R, not V, B, and R. But, and we already solved for the velocity of the particles right here. So now all we have to do is plug this in. All right, so the charge to mass ratio is equal to, okay, so plugging this in, we have an E on the top, we have an R, and then we have a B squared. So this B and this B give us a B squared on the bottom. And this can be measured in basically any undergraduate uh, physics lab. Um, lots of times you can you can just hold a magnet up to one of the old um, cathode ray oscilloscopes and you can just watch the beam deflect. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, 